Did you ever wonder what would happen if Doma was sent to the Swordsmith Village? Or what about if Tanjiro's dad decided to join the Demon Slayer Corps? And best of all, what would happen if the strongest Demon Slayer ever, Yorichi, was born in the current era? Well, after spending countless hours rereading the Demon Slayer manga, I figured out exactly what would happen. So you all know how Doma wanted to join Hantengu and Gyoko in the raid on the Swordsmith Village, but since Nakime refused to teleport him, he ended up not going. However, what if he actually managed to persuade Muzan to let him go? Would the Demon Slayers have any chance of stopping him? Well, there are three possible ways the story could go from here, and the first one is that Doma gets sent along with Hantengu and Gyoko. This means that there would now be three upper moons in the village at the same time. In the original story, the Slayers have barely managed to defeat two of them, and with Doma there, there is absolutely no way any of them would survive. Okay, that was pretty straightforward. But what if Doma was sent with only one other upper moon? Would the outcome be any different? In this scenario, we can assume that Gyoko would engage Muichiro, same as in the original, leaving Doma to face Tanjiro, Nezuko, and Genya. You are probably thinking how these three would be killed instantly in this battle, but that's actually not the case. You see, during his battle against Shinobu, we've seen that Doma loves to play with his opponents, slowly harming them and treating them as prey. Because of this, it's really unlikely he would go all out and just kill them on the spot. But why is this even important? Well, if Slayers manage to stall him for long enough, they'll be in a much better situation. And that's because Mitsuri, the love Ashira, will join the battle. Instead of being mad that another strong Demon Slayer came to fight him, Doma would be thrilled to see a female pillar and couldn't wait to devour her. So, with Mitsuri's arrival, the Slayers surely have at least some chance of winning, right? Well, no! They'll actually lose pretty quickly, and there's a simple explanation for that. Do you remember how hard it was for them to defeat Hantengo in the original story? Even with Tanjiro's red weapon and Mitsuri's Demon Slayer mark, they barely managed to survive! Although we've never seen Doma's full strength in the manga, it's clear that he is exponentially stronger than Hantengu, and therefore would easily kill all the Slayers and destroy the entire village. Okay. These two scenarios ended really badly for the Demon Slayers, but what if instead of going with the other upper moons, Doma went to the village alone? Would the Slayers be able to finally defeat this guy? Hit the subscribe button to wish them good luck! Since Gyoko is not present in this version, it means that Muichiro would be able to help this time, and with Mitsuri's arrival, there will now be two Hashiras along with Tanjiro's group battling the demon together. Doma would finally have to get serious at this point, and the intense battle would start. Initially, Doma's power and speed would surprise the Slayers, and he'd managed to seriously injure them using his cryokinesis blood demon art. But just as he is about to kill them, both Moichiro and Mitsuri awaken their Demon Slayer marks and start countering his attacks, surprising the Upper Moon. From here, Tanjiro would also activate his mark, and with Nezuko's help, he'll turn his weapon bright red. Doma would start to get pressured by the Demon Slayers, even sustaining some injuries. But this quickly changes as he activates his most powerful technique, Rhyme Water Lily Bodhisattva. The enormous ice statue suddenly appears and starts attacking all the Demon Slayers, gravely wounding them. Although it seems that Doma has won now and that all the Slayers are going to die, the Demon actually made one big mistake that will allow everyone to survive. Can you guess what it is? If you said that Doma has played with his opponents for too long at the beginning and the sun is now starting to rise, you are right. No matter how overpowered Doma is, he can't survive in the sunlight. So he would have to retreat, leaving everyone else exhausted on the ground. Man, I'm glad Muzan didn't let Doma go to the village. The Demon Slayers would stand no chance. Before we move on, let me tell you guys about the sponsor of today's video, War Thunder. War Thunder is a free-to-play game available for PC and consoles, and it has the most comprehensive vehicle combat I've ever seen. You can choose between 2,000 different tanks, planes, or ships, and battle other players in PvP battles. Every single one of these vehicles is really well made, and most of them even have the unique anime-themed skins. This is personally the thing I like the most, as I can switch this boring-looking plane to a Giyu-themed one. How cool is that? Same as Demon Slayer, War Thunder looks beautiful. I mean, just look at this level of detail. It's mind-blowing. The game also lets you choose your playing style, whether you prefer a fast, action-packed match or more down-to-earth tactical gameplay like I do, you are guaranteed to have fun. Click my link in the description to download War Thunder now, and you'll get all of these amazing bonuses plus a 3D anime body pillow to put on your tank. A true anime fan would definitely not miss out on that offer. Before we explain what would happen, 
if Yorichi was born in the current era, let's first explain what would happen if Tanjiro's dad decided to become a demon slayer. Although we didn't see much of Tanjiro throughout the series, it's obvious that the guy had incredible potential. Not only did he know Kagura dance, but he also had demon slayer mark and even selfless state ability, something that Tanjiro only unlocked during the last arc. So what if a guy like this wasn't sick and decided to join the demon slayer core and fight demons? What would change in this version of the story? And would he be powerful enough to take down Muzan? First of all, if Tanjiro decided to become a slayer, he would probably do it during his 20s, since that's when his physical strength is at its peak. This means that Tanjiro and Nezuko would still be really young when he left, and couldn't come with him. It's not clear how much knowledge Tanjiro had about Demon Slayer Core, but it's certain that he at least knew of their existence, so he would probably go to the final selection in order to become a member. Using Hinokami Kagura, he would easily kill every single demon on the mountain, surprising everyone. Kagaya would soon get a word about a strong Demon Slayer using sun breathing and invite him to Butterfly Mansion. Since this scenario takes place around five years before the original story, it means that the Hashira lineup would be completely different this time around, with most of the original Hashiras not being Demon Slayers yet. This is really interesting, as it means we may get to see some of the former Hashiras like Shinjuro, Kanao, and maybe even Yorokodaki. With only a few months of training in the core, Tanjiro would become the strongest warrior of his generation and would join the pillars as Sun Hashira. Another important thing to remember here is that Tanjiro is naturally born with the Demon Slayer mark, same as Yorichi and Tanjiro, and therefore he would most likely awaken all the legendary Demon Slayer abilities including Bright Red Weapon and Transparent World. Due to his kind nature, Tanjiro would offer to teach Slayers these new abilities, making the core many times stronger than in the original story. With his help, the core would also be powerful enough to battle against Upper Moons, something they could only dream of before. Not long after, the word of the mysterious sun-breathing user would reach Muzan, and he'd be absolutely terrified. I mean, just look at Tanjiro and Yurichi next to each other. Same earrings, the same breathing style, the same hair, they look pretty much identical. Same as in the manga, Muzan wouldn't dare to go after Tanjiro himself and would instead keep sending his subordinates to eliminate him. But let's be real here. If Tanjiro and the original Hashiras managed to defeat most of the Upper Moons, Tanjiro and these new overpowered pillars would definitely be able to deal with anything Muzan throws at them. Although everything seems to be going pretty well, there is one big problem with this development. Do you remember how the core found Muzan in the original story? That's right, they didn't. Muzan actually found them in order to eat Nezuko and gain immunity to sunlight. However, since Nezuko isn't a demon this time around, Muzan doesn't have a single reason to reveal himself. You may think Tanjiro and the other pillars can just go out and look for him, but you're forgetting something, the Infinity Castle. That's right, with Nakima's help, Muzan can just stay there for as long as he wants, and nobody will ever find him. This ultimately means that Tanjiro and all other Hashiras will eventually grow old or die in battle without ever even seeing the Demon King. Since Muzan remained hidden for years, this also means he wouldn't be able to attack the Kamado family, leading to Nezuko and Tanjiro never becoming core members. Eventually, after years have passed, with both Tanjiro and Tanjiro out of the picture, the Demon King starts to grow in power once again, and although the new pillars would definitely be really strong, there's just no way they could defeat Muzan without the help of a sun-breathing user. All right, that scenario went way worse than I thought. But did you ever wonder what would happen if the Demon Slayer God, Yorichi Tsubikuni, was born in Tanjiro's era? Would the two Sun Breathers fight alongside each other? And would Yorichi finally manage to defeat Muzan in this timeline? Well, I'll have to break your hopes in the very beginning. Tanjiro and Yorichi will, unfortunately, not fight together. Since Yorichi now lives in the current timeline, it means that he never showed Kagura dance to Tanjiro's ancestors, which would lead to Tanjiro being just a normal boy with no powers whatsoever. He wouldn't even have the Demon Slayer mark. Okay, that's unfortunate, but let's return to Yorichi. What would he do in this timeline? In the original story, twins were considered bad luck, and therefore Yorichi and his brother were treated very differently, ultimately leading to Michi Katsu being envious and jealous of Yorichi. However, in the current timeline, nobody believes in that stuff anymore, meaning that both twins would be raised the same way and trained together to become swordsmen. Another major change in this scenario is that the Demon Slayer core would be much weaker than in the original, as Yorichi never taught them how to use breathing styles. This basically means that the core would consist of ordinary samurai warriors, and they would struggle to defeat even the low-ranking demons. Because of this, Muzan and his army of demons would freely roam during the night, knowing that there is nobody strong enough to stand in their way. 
decade, Yorichi and Michikatsu would eventually grow up and become really strong, but most importantly, due to their normal upbringing, there will be no hatred between them. From here, it's most likely that some of the Demon Slayers would try to recruit the twins because of their phenomenal swordsmanship, and considering Yorichi's willingness to help others, he would accept. From here, the golden age of Demon Slayers would start, and Yorichi would develop the first ever breathing style, sun breathing. Same as in the original. Yorichi would teach others how to use this mysterious power, eventually creating six main breathing styles. It goes without saying that he would easily become the Sun Hashira, and everyone in the core would look up to him, seeing him as their leader. The Demon Slayers would now be stronger than ever, and for the first time in many years, they'll be able to fight back against demons. Now, in the previous scenario, we talked about how Muzan goes into hiding whenever he feels threatened. However, this time, that won't actually happen. You see, in this timeline, Muzan never lost a duel with Yorichi, meaning he still believes he is the strongest being in the world, and therefore, there is no reason to hide. In the original manga, we can see that Muzan knew about breath users, but he still didn't care and said he wasn't interested in them. So, we can assume he would act the same this time. A few years after Yorichi joined the Corps, he and his brother would patrol a nearby village during the night when, out of nowhere, they sense a terrifying presence appear right in front of them. They had never sensed an aura as powerful as this one before, and when they look up, they see the Demon King Muzan standing before them. As in the original, Muzan wouldn't waste any time and immediately attack the Slayers with his transformed arm. Although Yorichi would dodge, his brother would get hit and thrown to the ground. Yorichi would quickly realize who he was up against, and in a split second, he'd perfect his breathing style and slice all of Muzan's weak points simultaneously. Seriously injured and in utter disbelief, Muzan would panic and split his body into 1,800 different pieces in order to escape. In the blink of an eye, Yorichi would manage to cut 1,500 pieces, and just as it seemed that Muzan would manage to escape, Michikatsu would jump forward with his brother and, using his moon breathing, barely manage to slice the remaining 300 pieces. With this, the demon lord who terrorized Japan for over a millennia would finally be defeated forever by the combined power of two brothers. Others. Don't forget to click the link in the description to download War Thunder now and get all of these amazing bonuses on screen, plus that 3D anime body pillow which you definitely don't want to pass on. And who knows, maybe we'll see each other in the game. Click on this video where we covered what would happen if all demon moons attacked Muzan together.